All righty, gang. Um, good morning. Wonderful to see all of you. Um, I wanted to give a, a quick overview of some of the things that are launching this week. Some of them already have presented today, so I will hopefully not duplicate Patrick's fantastic presentation on station. Um, but I wanted to give people a little bit more insight into different things that are happening um, kind of across, across the space um, right now, and then some of the exciting things coming in 2024. Um, but before I dive into those, I also wanted to take a quick celebratory tour through some of the things that um, really upgraded this year for Filecoin um, in 2023, um, which are then leading and getting to, to launch at Lab Week, um, and then leading into these uh, additional improvements and breakthroughs in 2024. Um, so as you know, Filecoin is a crypto-powered storage network, um, and it's also becoming the data storage layer, not just of Web3, but also the web in general. Um, we just celebrated Filecoin's three-year mainnet anniversary, which is really exciting. Um, it's ex Yeah, this is crazy. The time has flown. Uh, I'm sure you guys all feel it too. Um, and really one of the, the amazing milestones to celebrate this year um, in, in Filecoin land was the Filecoin virtual machine when that launched. Um, and so that'll be highlight number one, you'll see in a second. Um, here's just a, a small sampling of some of the, the breakthroughs that have launched over the course of this year. Um, and I'm excited to dive into three of them, starting with FVM. Um, so this launched on Pi Day, March 14th, so 3.14. Um, and this was a huge, huge level up for Filecoin as a network. Um, this brought on-chain programmability and smart contracts, fully EVM compatible, so you can use all of the development tools that you're used to in uh, Ethereum land. Um, and it started enabling people um, to bring things like DeFi, bring things like um, you know, tools that, that do auto repair of deals when they expire, um, things that start uh, interacting over top of stored data in Filecoin, things like data DAOs. Um, and it's been really, really exciting to see what the 200 plus teams now building on Filecoin Virtual Machine have created. Um, it's just a fantastic collection of um, many bridges and oracles coming in, helping bring more value into the Filecoin ecosystem, um, exchanges, DEXs, wallets, um, and many, many others uh, coming in. So uh, big, big, exciting upgrade just in the past month with both uh, Uniswap and SushiSwap uh, coming and bringing uh, real-time DEXs into FVM as well. Um, you can see the growth really taking shape here. Um, we actually were struggling with a big problem this time last year, which is that storage providers were, were struggling to get access to the large amounts of fill that they need to secure the data that they store on the network. And it was actually bottlenecking data storage. We couldn't find, get access um, as, as a storage provider community to the resources needed to make sure that data could be secured um, with good collateral. Um, and a lot of the DeFi solutions like Glyph um, and many others uh, came in, solved that problem, and we've seen the, um, the TVL in Filecoin grow massively, um, the amount of lending, um, fill borrowed, fill deposited, um, grow significantly as well. And Filecoin is now top 25 um, just at, with six months, six months since FEM launched, and we're already in the top 25 of all chains for TVL, which like kind of blows my mind. We were 80 at the beginning of the summer. Um, and so that's like a really amazing growth rate uh, that I'm uh, excited to see continuing every week when I chat with the FM team. It's like, how is this still something like over 10% week over week growth? Like that's really impressive as an ecosystem. Um, the, the really exciting thing though is thinking about all of the amazing things that people are building. Um, Lighthouse has made massive step forwards in uh, perpetual storage deals. So now you can store with Lighthouse, they take an endowment and they make sure that your deal is stored and renewed uh, over time. Um, and they've added a lot of really useful um, components within that, uh, things like PODSI, which gives you the um, kind of index of all of the data stored in a deal, um, and a lot of other improvements as well. Uh, repair as a service, which we call RAS, uh, repair and replication. Um, and, and that's been uh, awesome to see, right? That's making it much easier for clients to interact with Filecoin data because they can program on top of your basic deal components um, to give users what they're looking for. Um, I'll go into a couple more of these in a second, but it's been, it's been really awesome to see the innovation here. 
Um, and FVM was a critical new layer of Filecoin because it unlocks so much more. Um, not only does it unlock a massive ecosystem of applications, but it's also starting to unlock um, deep pin solutions, uh, you know, heavy infrastructure level applications that are building with Filecoin as their base layer and FVM as their base layer. And the reason why this is so effective and so, so kind of like the right foundation for these applications, not only does it couple you close to large scale Filecoin storage, if you want to do compute, you want to be next to lots of data that's stored, but the FVM was designed as a hypervisor. It's a WASM-based hypervisor. You can add many runtimes. You can add many new actors to FVM. That's exactly how it was designed. Um, and the amazing thing is you can now start adding new runtimes to FVM that can power all sorts of interesting um, kind of compute applications or uh, uh, web two based applications. Uh, one of the things I'm hoping to, to meet with people about um, at the next uh, ETH India hackathon uh, or the Phil Bangalore is leaning into adding new runtimes to FVM for things like Docker, for things like, um, you know, Lambda functions um, as WASM runtimes inside of FVM that now people can build and deploy contracts on directly. Um, and so that's the really exciting kind of base layer of FVM that can be very powerful for new layer twos that are building on top of it. So Fluence, for example, is going to be taking advantage of being able to deploy their own WASM function, um, I think it's random X, I believe, is the, is the function that they need, um, which is part of their compute network and enables them to, you know, customize the runtime for their application for, for the way that their, uh, their compute network works. So that's great. And you don't then need to build your entire runtime. You don't need to build your entire L1 blockchain. Um, you have the custom customizability that you need while still being able to, to scale very quickly. All right, highlight number two is obviously the storage growth for Filecoin, um, really helping Filecoin go from being relatively hard to store with um, to much, much easier and seeing this accelerate over the course of the last year. Um, so we've, we've seen a massive number of new clients on board onto Filecoin um, and a, a huge community um, that's actually taking massive advantage uh, of this network. So, you know, something like five to six petabytes onboarded per day, we're now at 1.6 exabytes of data stored in Filecoin. Um, and that's just a massive, massive increase since where we were a year ago, um, where there was still friction in the deal-making process. We were still um, working to kind of accelerate the throughput of data being onboarded into the Filecoin ecosystem. Um, and so it's been really amazing to see that, that increase. Um, and it's enabled a whole ton of fantastic use cases. Um, University of Utah is utilizing it. You see Berkeley to power dark matter research. Um, in Australia, they're using this for like cardiac uh, cancer research data. Um, and so there's this whole fantastic community of Filecoin clients, um, which is like a pretty awesome group to be in. It's like SETI and CERN and uh, a ton of amazing uh, clients who are storing their data on Filecoin. Um, and so, you know, from my vantage point in the past year, we've, we've proved Filecoin is a great storage network. And the, the thing focused for next year is really harnessing the additional tooling that's been created around retrievability to prove that Filecoin is a robust place to fetch and retrieve your data from, which means that you can start removing your other copies or your other archives and depending solely on Filecoin as a good home for your data, taking full advantage of cost savings, um, taking full advantage of, of the functionality there. Um, so we have made a lot of progress in retrievals. I think, you know, per Will's talk, we still have a lot to do. We still have room to improve. Um, but we've added new tooling like Lassie. Um, uh, Q1 of this past year, uh, there was a, a competition um, called Golden Retriever. Uh, and we saw, you know, multiple different storage providers having 100% success rate on, on retrieval requests, which was awesome. It really helped identify and fix issues in the retrieval uh, request pipeline. Um, so the tooling itself has leveled up massively here. Um, and it's now pretty easy and simple to offer reliable retrievals if you choose to. So the, the underlying components are pretty solid now. 
Um, we've also started getting much better visibility into this, tracking um, good metrics around um, the usage of Boost as a strong retrieval client. Um, and lastly, uh, you know, this is retrieval bot actively checking the various different BitSwap, GraphSync, HTTP transports. Um, and then in the bottom corner, this is showing that we have, uh, you know, uh, I think 50 percentile is sub-second retrieval requests, and then 95th percentile is like 1 in 1.5 seconds. Um, it's pretty good. It's like not bad for retrieval um, request latency on Filecoin today. Um, the area that we need to improve though, for sure, is uh, that bottom um, corner talking about the retrieval success rate, the number of storage providers actually utilizing all of these new tools and all of this um, new functionality to make their data available. Which leads us into all of the, the awesome work that's happening around first, measure retrievability, and then incentivize reliable retrievals for Filecoin. Um, and so a lot of components here have been built out over the past year um, in order to make sure that we can, A, get a really good picture on who is um, and is not offering you know, accurate retrievals, um, and then start collecting a very representative data set that we can use to flow incentives correctly to make sure that everyone can rely upon this. All right, highlight number four has to be compute networks. This is a uh, critical step in the Filecoin master plan, step number three. So um, been a lot of progress in this area. Um, Buckle Yao, which is the uh, kind of IPFS of compute, um, reached 1.0 earlier this year. Um, they have uh, a lot of really useful tooling for anyone who's building compute networks, and that can be Web 2 or Web 3 compute networks. Expanso, which is a company focused on edge computing, is using Buckle Yao. So are a number of like Web 3 blockchain networks uh, offering decentralized compute. So it works uh, in both cases, gives you a canonical job spec, uh, fetches data from IPFS, stores data on IPFS, um, and allows you to do kind of decentralized edge uh, computing really effectively. It has a lot of common components that are useful, job schedulers, um, you know, cluster uh, logic, things like that. Um, we also started running this awesome gathering of people in the um, compute ecosystem um, with 30 plus orgs that are gathering together at summits that have weekly or bi-weekly meetings where they're drilling into the different uh, advances across different compute networks um, and have amassed this really fantastic community of folks that are building their compute on Filecoin. Um, I, I mentioned this yesterday as well, but uh, Water Lily was a really cool um, application, kind of a demo, um, that showed what's possible um, with Filecoin and FVM and Compute with Bacal Yao. Um, and so it harnessed all of those three things, put it together, and allowed anyone to put in their own little uh, generative AI prompt and create their own image minted as an NFT on FVM. Um, and then actually, it... it, it kept track of all of the data sources that it trained over and then rewarded the creators of those data sets based on every, every image or um, NFT that was created as well. So it was flowing royalties back to the, the data servers, um, which I think is a really, really awesome model that I have heard a couple of other uh, compute uh, networks planning to do on Filecoin as well, which I think is going to, you know, really offer an alternative to the current strife in the AI community where uh, content creators are seeing their entire collections of uh, past public works get, um, you know, kind of stealing their future revenue streams um, of what they you know, could create in the future because centralized AI companies are being like, great, Drake, we don't need you anymore. We're just gonna create your next music video based on some AI algorithm and um, you know, you're, you're out of any, any royalties or any revenue stream um, based on the past work you've done. So I think this is a, an awesome example and I'd love, love to talk to more people that are working on things like this. I think it could be really exciting. Um, I mentioned Expanso. Um, it's an awesome, awesome group that's um, building um, a, a kind of Web 2 focused company um, that's you know, targeting enterprise and edge computing. And then if you join us on Thursday at the um, interplanetary consensus um, meetup, uh, which I think is maybe here or maybe 
in Fuji in the other room. You can learn more about LilyPad, which is a trustless distributed compute network that's building on top of all of those building blocks as well and turning it into a, a, a network where anyone can provide GPU resources and anyone can deploy jobs using the Bakalyao job spec um, to be run uh, across that network. Um, highlight number five, so last but not least, is scalability in L2s. Um, you'd all, if you join us on Thursday, you'll also learn more about interplanetary consensus, or IPC, um, which is uh, aiming to power planetary scale Web3 applications. Um, this is also kind of a, a layer two framework for anyone to deploy their own subnets on top of Filecoin. Um, it's checkpoint state into the Filecoin mainnet, but it allows for things like one second block times, very fast finality, it comes with FE built in so that you can deploy, just like Fluence, your own WASM actors as needed to customize your subnet. Um, and it's also going to be deploying a hosted L2 subnet on Filecoin, which can be a good place for folks that need really fast iteration times. Water Lily, for example, um, I think aims to deploy there as well, so that instead of waiting 30 seconds, which is the Filecoin block time, to get your NFT minted, it can happen in a single second. Uh, your uh, fill can be taken for minting that image, and it can return you back your wonderful rainbow unicorn NFT. Uh, and so it can be a, a really useful network for things like that. Uh, Spark actually is a, another example that, that aims to use IPC exactly for being able to do very fast uh, um, transactions at low cost, so much lower gas fees um, for operating in uh, highly scalable L2 space. Um, IPC aims to kind of do three main things. Um, one, make sure that all of our blockchain networks and systems can be truly internet scale, that we can have the kind of like capacity and throughput to bring all of the activity inside of a video game, for example, on chain um, instead of you know having the cost per data storage or the cost per transaction be so high that you only put the like tiny highest uh, you know most financialized transactions on chain when building applications. Um, uh, IPC aims to bring regional sharding, so you can spin up and spin down an IPC subnet very smoothly and quickly. You can run very fast subnets, even just at the level of a data center, which brings its state up to the parent and the parent and the parent, and it's recursive just like that. Um, and so this is exactly how the internet works today and exactly what you're going to need to offer very fast performance, again, for something like a video game where you, you know, don't want to be waiting for global consensus on whether or not your uh, you know, ball went in the goal or something like that. Um, and finally, focused around um, things like fast upgradability um, and high customizability, trying to um, make the base layer of building blockchains more modular and more customizable without having to recreate all of the heavy lifting of building your own L1. Um, this is where the, you know, WASM, add your own, you know, custom, like, Everything compiles to WASM these days, as far as I can tell. So, you know, you have a program you want to add into your network. Awesome. Write it in whatever language you care about. And then you can uh, compile it down to WASM and drop it in. And voila, you've customized your blockchain runtime. Um, and so that's, I think, a, a really awesome vision, especially for, for developers who don't want to learn Solidity or uh, go through the, some of the regular moles of EVM. Um, I'd mentioned uh, this IPC subnet structure. Um, you can uh, end up having uh, app-specific subnets here as well. So maybe you have your gaming subnet, but you want to scale this with um, either multiple games or specific regions for really fast uh, execution. I don't know if anyone, uh, you know, is used to joining different gaming servers for really fast performance in different areas. Um, and so uh, this is kind of that uh, expandability going both uh, kind of like ver vertically scaling and horizontally scaling. Um, and as I mentioned, uh, by being built on top of FVM, all of these subnets both get EVM compatibility and specialized built-in WASM actors that you can customize and add yourself um, and escape, escape into native land for things like optimized GPU actors or um, optimized ZK or FHE actors um, that you can bring into FEM to customize your subnet. 
All right, so that was our whirlwind tour of 2023. Um, to cap off the end of 2023, because we're still here, uh, I wanted to highlight a couple of the things that are launching this lab week. Some of these are um, things you've already heard about. Some of these are things that are coming later in the week. Um, First, I highly recommend coming on Thursday to learn more about IPC mycelium. This is the hosted Falcoin L2 subnet that will be launching on Calibration Net this week. Might have already launched on Calibration Net this week. I haven't been paying enough attention. Um, but this is super exciting. Now all sorts of people can be deploying their subnets on Filecoin, and this is also a great place to bootstrap additional subnets. So if you want to try your own FEM runtime, um, spinning up your own uh, IPC subnet hooked into Mycelium, we'll have one second block times, um, and we'll have super, I think, one one block and therefore one second uh, finality within the Mycelium subnet. So really awesome place to deploy um, your smart contracts or deploy your own kind of WASM runtime um, in order to iterate quickly. That's gonna be going to GA in early Q1 um, and we'll be uh, launching with a number of other subnets harnessing that technology who are building right now. So if you are excited about this and want to talk about all the cool things that you want to build, I would happily talk with you, but also definitely come on Thursday to, to that meeting. Um, you've already heard a lot about Station, um, which is uh, enabling everyone to provide their underutilized hardware resources uh, to the internet economy. Super cool. If you're not running a fill Station node on your personal computer, what are you doing? That is, you know, sense of fill that you are missing out on every single day. Um, and you get to be a member of the Filecoin ecosystem, measuring all of the storage providers in the network for their retrievability success. It's awesome. It launched. A lot of people are already doing it. It's great. So you should come join us. And uh, I've been running a station node for about a year now, I believe. Um, it used to be uh, doing other things. Now it's doing this. Soon it'll be doing more. I'm really excited. It's, it's just a worker node where you can be a member of the Filecoin ecosystem and you can accept jobs from anyone who wants to hire out your node and pay you in fill. Um, and I think that's really, really exciting. Um, if you are excited about building your own little impact evaluator worker Lambda module that you want to deploy on station, check out Meridian, which is a framework that they have also built um, for uh, thinking about how to build these incentives uh, efficiently and deploy them onto the station network of nodes so that you can also take advantage of these, you know, already 1,400 nodes around the world uh, that are running these little checker jobs so far, um, which I think is fantastic. So go check it out. I'm really excited to see what you build. And I'm also, you know, really excited to see this, this network continue growing so that we can be sampling retrievability across the Filecoin ecosystem very robustly. Um, you know, previously, you know, people have uh, looked at the, the past retrieval bots that have been running and been like, cool, well, I'll just find the, you know, IP address of the like three retrieval bot nodes and I'll whitelist them and I'll deny retrievals from everyone else. With Station, you can't do that. Anyone can be a node that is in the Station network that is sending those retrieval requests. The traffic looks exactly like normal retrieval requests to a storage provider. Um, and that kind of like similarity is also a, a big selling point in terms of making sure that you are getting your measurements accurately. Um, there's also some exciting news in Saturn land. Um, if you care about hot, fast data on Filecoin and you want to level up our current um, retrieval uh, expectations with CDN level performance, come talk to the Saturn team. They're still in private beta, so they have a couple of early customers they're chatting with, um, but uh, we're, we're looking forward to and excited to, to find additional folks that this can um, kind of upgrade their data collections. If you already have your data stored on something like, well, I mean, obviously if you have your data stored on Filecoin already, that's awesome. We're, we're great to, very excited to chat with you about that, but also anyone who's storing their data on uh, IPFS, uh, either hosted infrastructure or things like um, kind of like other uh, IPFS pinning services or networks. Um, that's also a great example. But we can also work with you to bring your data to IPFS and Filecoin and then accelerate it with Saturn. So um, all of those options exist and we're excited to chat with more people. Um, I'll put you in touch with the right folks if you come find me. Um, last but not least, I believe we heard uh, a, a good chunk already from the, the DStore folks about their REST API beta, um, working with a couple of awesome groups uh, to make use of this 
uh, kind of MSP facilitated um, API. Uh, so this is really focused on folks who are gonna deploy um, what we have, at least I've been calling motion. I think it's now the, the DStore REST API beta, which sounds much nicer and more professional, um, but deploy kind of a, a, a set of tooling um, so that anyone can um, take advantage of um, MSPs or ISVs or uh, other three-letter acronym groups that make it a lot easier for enterprise clients to bring their data to the Filecoin ecosystem, offering things like S3 gateways. So it's very simple and easy to just plug in as an additional storage option for uh, any enterprise client. Um, this is not focused on, hey, you know, spin this up on your local laptop and uh, just run this gateway. This is, you know, focused on uh, slightly more um, kind of like uh, folks who want to offer themselves a white glove uh, onboarding service and they want to utilize all of this tooling and this, you know, SDK almost, um, in order to do that effectively. And so we ha we're working with a number of existing large-scale MSPs um, to enable them to add Filecoin to their service offering and then use their existing enterprise client relationships um, so that they can add low-cost, efficient Filecoin storage as one of their many storage options. If you are excited about building your own white glove data storage business, this is also fantastic tooling and, and frameworks to do exactly that. So it's not only for the existing MSPs, um, if you're also potentially interested in creating your own uh, white glove storage business, please get in touch. All right, um, and I think I'm way over time, but wanna do a very quick tour through some of the 2024 priorities and milestones that are coming up next year. Um, you might have seen this slide that Juan presented yesterday at the um, PL Summit um, in terms of some of the key network goals for Filecoin over the coming year. Um, starts with reducing network-wide OPEX, making it lower cost for storage providers, node operators, clients to engage with Filecoin. This can be just by you know, making the storage uh, system more efficient, things like non-interactive PoRep, which kind of gets rid of an entire step of the sealing process to make it much more efficient for storage providers to onboard data. Um, but it can also be other optimizations elsewhere um, in the stack that just makes Filecoin more cost effective. Wunderbar. Um, next is making uh, retrievals uh, reliable and making reliable retrieval the standard for Filecoin storage. Um, we've heard a lot about that in the, the previous talk, but really starts with robustly measuring retrieval performance, um, connecting that to incentives, and then adding kind of tiers of caching layers or, or tiers of um, you know, cold to hot that different uh, clients can select between. Um, next is making storage simpler, faster, more reliable. This is additional on-ramps, awesome tools like the DStore REST API that can power more medium to large to extra large uh, on-ramps coming to Filecoin and bringing their existing tooling and customizability. Um, uh, fourth is onboarding paying users to Filecoin storage, um, and that really leans on the things above. The more reliable retrieval is, the simpler and faster onboarding is, the more Filecoin can charge for its services. Um, and so really, we all as a community need to level up those expectations so that we can charge people for it. Um, and I think that's gonna be a, an awesome next step for next year um, is, is taking the, the low cost expectation of Filecoin and, and raising those a little bit, but in comparison to what we offer as a service, um, I think it'll still be very cost effective versus the rest of the ecosystem. Um, and so the bringing in uh, paying users for large scale archives, for deep pin networks, there's actually a, a really growing community of folks building um, you know, things like WeatherXM that's collecting lots of localized weather data, um, HiveMapper, which is like mapping lo local cities and communities. Um, they are creating large amounts of decentralized data archives and working with decentralized storage through efficient on-ramps um, is exactly what they need as they hit their next hockey stick uh, growth trajectories. Um, and obviously better uh, small, fast, hot data um, onboarding ramps as well. Um, 
Uh, second to last is building high value applications on Filecoin. Um, this is things related to better infrastructure around compute, CDNs, databases, and object storage. Um, data generators, this is those deep pin networks, helping them not just use Filecoin for storage, but build on top of Filecoin and bring their entire application stack to Filecoin via things like IPC layer twos and subnets. Um, and then also bringing large scale applications um, like data science platforms, games and social networks so that many people are doing their day-to-day -day work and play uh, in the Filecoin ecosystem. Um, and finally, uh, it's really focused around those uh, compute heavy networks um, as Filecoin L2s with custom runtimes, fast interop and bridging, um, and checkpointing all of their, their state and needs into Filecoin directly. Um, you've probably seen this image. We talked about this a lot at the um, Phil Dev Summit in both Singapore and Iceland earlier this year, um, but it's a model of the Filecoin economy and how um, you know the more that we export in terms of good and utilities, the more value we can bring into the Filecoin economy. The more we have to pay for you know underlying support, things like you know opex of storage providers um, and, and other costs. The more we have to export value out of our economy, and then we have a couple of uh, internal components of the economy, um, both around uh, kind of like internal businesses, the more, you know, businesses that fully interac uh, interact end-to-end -end infill, denominated infill, that's more kind of like uh, internal transactions in our island economy, um, and then fill consumption, which is things like fees that the network charges for um, things like usage of gas or, um, you know, different, uh, different fees for, um, you know, securing all of uh, these different transactions. Um, and I wanted to put this in context of those breakthroughs from next year so you can see how the, the list of improvements connects back to making the Filecoin economy better and stronger. So um, more reliable retrieval and making that the standard for clients means that we can export more value and uh, import uh, more, more uh, paying customers and the work that they want to do for Filecoin. Um, the more on-ramps, that's the more data that we are importing and the more that we are you know, getting paid for that data, um, that's also importing um, more value into to the Filecoin ecosystem. Um, in terms of things that can lower the, you know, uh, value leaving the Filecoin economy, that's things like reducing storage provider costs, making it lower cost to be a storage provider, um, can actually uh, decrease the OPEX that they need to pay in USD, which means that we keep more of that value in the Filecoin economy. Um, also bringing in new funding for businesses when more applications go to raise money to build on top of Filecoin, that's flowing more value from venture capital or from um, other uh, external network uh, communities to, to increase the amount of building and value being created in the Filecoin economy so that can reduce, um, you know, short-term OPEX that, uh, you know, comes from uh, spending fill or something like that. Um, and then finally, on the consumption side of things, more high value applications, that's more transactions, that's uh, more gas usage, um, similar with compute heavy L2 networks, um, that also can bring um, significant more fill consumption to the economy. And so um, this ties together how we can do all of these things and we make Filecoin better for everyone. Um, all right, so quick preview, I'm way over time, uh, into the things that are happening in Q1. Um, first, absolutely come join us on Thursday. There's the uh, agenda, so if you scan that QR code, you'll know where to go um, to hear more about the IPC Mycelium GA, which unlocks all of these awesome L2 networks for Filecoin. Um, also, we'll be telling you a little bit more about some of the awesome compute over data L2s that are already building with IPC so that you can hire really interesting um, AI, generative AI or uh, Lambda jobs to run over your data stored in Filecoin. So come, come check that out. It's going to be really fun and exciting. Um, both of those are planning to go to GA in Q1. So get ready. Q1 is going to be, you know, it's like FEM round two, but this time it's layer two networks. Um, there's also the amazing work that Spark's doing. I think, uh, you know, as we start collecting more and more data there, integrating that back into um, the Filecoin protocol, 
probably starting with Filecoin Plus, but maybe going even further with that so that everyone can have robust retrieval expectations um, based on their retrieval tier that they set using um, Will's new FIP um, can flow that expectation across the Filecoin ecosystem, which means that we can um, you know, attract more clients and sell uh, Filecoin storage at a higher price. Um, there's also a lot of work being done right now. It's literally an implementation around fast finality. And so this would um, bring 30 second chain finality to Filecoin. Currently the, um, you know, Theoretical finality of Filecoin, technically from a security perspective, is something like 700 blocks, which is a long time. Uh, and so this would make it one block, which would be great. Uh, and that makes it much easier for anyone who's doing bridging or exchanges, um, I mean, even applications, um, but especially all of those layer two subnets, um, that will be much easier for them to interact and transact with Filecoin mainnet from their subnet that might be moving with, you know, a block per second, and 30 seconds already feels like plenty of time. Um, there's also some awesome work that's happening with direct data onboarding that's planning to go into the next uh, Q1 uh, network upgrade, uh, which simplifies kind of deal and sector accounting and then reduces gas spends. Um, the DStore REST API, I believe, is going to GA sometime in Q1 or Q2 so that all of these MSPs and ISVs can uh, add Filecoin to their enterprise data storage offerings. Um, Non-interactive PoRep, if you haven't heard about this, I really recommend checking out some of the talks, I think from the Singapore PhilDev Summit, it was where we went deeper into this, um, this idea of ice cube sectors where you can pre-seal a bunch of sectors say using a ceiling as a service um, provider and you can buy pre-sealed committed capacity sectors and just snap your data into it um, at the edge. I think this is really exciting in terms of the level of modularity it brings to being a storage provider in the Filecoin ecosystem. And uh, I expect either some storage providers are gonna get this really right and be able to supercharge their onboarding flows or it's an opportunity for some new storage providers to set up their configuration fully designed around non-interactive PoRep, where instead of having to build up a significant ceiling, um, you know, a set of GPUs and, and rig, they just buy their pre-sealed sectors from, um, you know, ceiling as a service provider, um, and then focus entirely on client data storage and getting the data at the edges, bringing those committed capacity sectors to those edge, edge uh, setups um, where they need very, very low cost hardware, um, just coupled with the, the, the storage uh, utilities. So, I think this is really exciting. I would recommend you go and, and check that out uh, and tell me more about things that you're excited about it or ways we can keep making it better. Um, and last but not least, there's uh, a lot of work that we talked about in Fildev, Fildev Iceland, actually, uh, around adding custom, custom WASM actors to FVM. You can technically already do this today on your own DevNet or subnet, um, but in Q1, aiming to make that much, much easier so that um, it doesn't involve forking FVM in order to add your own uh, WASM actor to it. So making it much more, uh, you know, the, the DX better so that anyone can deploy their own Docker runtime or their own, um, you know, GPU accelerating, uh, Wasm actor into FVM to power uh, compute networks and many other L2s. All right, so with that, I'm really excited to chat with all of you about ways we can make Filecoin better. Thank you all so much and great to chat with you.